guys, I wanted to come on here today and talk to you guys a bit about homeschool conferences. And what I want to talk to you about is the bookstore side of it. Um, I am going to a homeschool conference this weekend. It's coming to my town. And I just thought it would be the perfect opportunity to kind of... Um, I don't know, give, give some ideas about how I want to go about um, the bookstore because when you go in and you see all these different vendors and you see all this cool stuff, um, depending on how seasoned of a homeschooler or how veteran of a homeschooler you are, it's really, really easy <laughs> to get tempted to buy all of this stuff. And while it's all great, um, you don't need all of it. And you can't afford all of it. So I would like to go, I've made some notes for myself about how I'm going to um, go into the into this weekend, how I want to um, approach the bookstore. I'm calling it a bookstore. I don't know what else you would call it, but you know what I mean, where they sell things in at the homeschool conference. So um, the conference goes Friday and Saturday. So what I've told myself is, the things that I have on my list, I can buy on Friday. <laughs> and then the extra things that I've kind of left a little bit of room for, I won't um, buy until Saturday. So what my plan is, um, is first thing I need, to, or I wanted to set a budget. And so um, I've set my particular budget and I've taken all of these things into account that I'm going to tell you about. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to just jump right in here. Um, the first thing is I have looked online and I do know which vendors are going to be there. So I know that I can get this stuff um, at my conference this weekend. So the first um, booth that I want to visit would be um, a resource booth. It's called Rainbow Resource. And they they have a book that I've wanted to get for this, this school year. Um, it's called Daily Paragraph Editing. So my first tip is look through your homeschool, um, what you would like to supplement for the current year that you are homeschooling. And by that, we're almost done with our year. We only have a couple of months left, but I still do want to add this one thing in before the school year is over. So I wanted to look through and see what I want to buy to supplement the remainder of our year. Um, the second thing that I have come across that I need this year um, before the year ends um, are fraction manipulatives for my nine-year-old. Um, he definitely needs some of those to go along with his math because it gets tiresome drawing them out all the time. It would just be quicker. Um, the other thing to go along with that would be not only supplements for the rest of the year, but looking ahead towards next year and looking at the things that you know you're going to have to buy. Say your younger child, well, most of you probably have this, your younger child is moving in up to the next math curriculum level and you need the work the workbook for it because that's something that you just need to replace year, um, from year to year. So I am looking for a math, um, a whole math curriculum for my older son for next year because since he is my oldest, I don't have the next math curriculum. And then for my younger son, I haven't quite decided if I am sticking with um, Matthew C or switching him to Saxon. We've done the primer for Matthew C and um, I'm still kind of debating, but I really want to figure that out before this weekend so I can get it and save on shipping. So why not? So I'm going to um, look that over and see what workbooks I need. I think that's pretty much all I need as far as workbooks go. Um, the rest of it, for English, that's the other thing you'd probably need to look at to replace a workbook. Um, but anything else like that that you need to, that you know from year to year you do over and over and over, like math and English, that the workbooks um, are consumable and so you'll need to replace those. So I've also looked at that for next year and I still have to make that decision for my younger son. But for the rest of, or for my older son, I've just made note of what I want to buy for him to save on shipping. Um, the next thing... Uh, I do classical conversations, so if you don't do classical conversations, I'm sure you have some sort of idea of where you want to be going next, like for next year, what you want to focus on. So for me, for classical conversations, I have, I know we're doing cycle two, and so I know what kind of science we're doing, I know what we're doing for history and that kind of thing. So I want to look at, and I've 
Um, a quick tip, if you do um, classical conversations, I'm sure you've heard of Half a Hundred Acre Wood and her blog. She has some fantastic resource sheets on there that are just very compact, very organized, and all you have to do is look and there's like reading resources, like books, and there's also, um, what else does she have? just a lot of books and things to go along with that and she also has like story of the world mystery of history and a couple of science um, encyclopedias and things like that that she actually um, lists the page numbers that go along with the particular week that you're studying so you could read that so that's something else I'm going to look at is I have one of each I have like volume one of story of the world and volume four of mystery of history or something like that that I've picked up used I am gonna look at those just to see because I know next year they um, there's a lot of volume two reading and things like that we have done a little bit of that this year not a whole lot so I'm not sure if I'm gonna I, I don't know what next year is gonna look like so I might not dive in and buy that quite yet um, the other, let's see, I went over the resource list. Oh, and also I was going to mention, I I love checking books out from the library. I don't know why, but I don't love owning a bunch of books. I just, it's it's like clutter in my mind, and I'm sorry for you, those of you who love owning books, but I just, I don't love to own a bunch of books. Like, ones that I know we love and will read over and over, yes. But for the rest of them, um, a bunch of the resources that are listed that I just want to get from week to week, I really love checking them out at my library. So sometimes I'll go through and kind of do a quick check on my computer because we, our library has an online um, database that you can go on and check and even like hold books and things like that. So I like to go online, see what my library has to offer. And if there are a couple books that I'm like, yeah, I really want that, like a science encyclopedia or one of the history, um, story of the world, mystery of history books, I like to purchase things like that, of course, and I don't think you can get them from the library. Um, the other thing is, the last thing. So you have the things you want to supplement for this year. You have the things that you know you need for next year. You look also at the resource lists and kind of that's like a little bit of an extra list, um, in my opinion, because I don't have to have those things, but it's things that, um, you know, it would be nice to own and we can go, go through at our leisure. And then the last thing, I'm hoping to leave a little bit of spending money for, um, or have a little spending money left over. I have a school room and I love to put things on the wall. I don't, um, I don't think I go overboard, but I definitely put things on the wall. I don't have every inch covered, but um, I have like, uh, for this year, I had English, like a noun and verb and adjective, adverb, all those. And I, I bought those at Lakeshore Learning, I believe. But um, Rainbow Resource, I know, has a bunch of things like that. So if you are starting out homeschooling, I would suggest getting a really great map. Um, also, maybe like a calendar, something for your wall that, you know, you're going to be using every day or, or frequently. We use our maps really frequently and our calendar we use every day. So I would just say something like that, like save some money for um, something that you want to put up on your wall. Um, for me, I always look over cycle two. Uh, I've picked them up at garage sales, I've picked them up at um, Lakeshore Learning, just something that's appealing to the eye, like a poster or, you know, something that you can hang up on the wall. And I don't leave it up all year. I did with English this year because we were going over it so frequently. Um, but I have a poster that um, it's like core mantle crust. It's the parts of the earth, the layers of the earth. And I put that up just when we were going over that. So that's been really fun to have up and the kids really enjoy looking at it. And it's something new and kind of freshens up the room a little bit. So if you do have a homeschooling space that you can hang things on the wall, um, I would suggest leaving a little money for that. So those are my tips and those are my tips for myself. So I'm hoping to be able to, um, just to make it easier because I know when I go into a place, I'm not like this so much when I go like clothes shopping for myself, but boy howdy, when I go into um, like a bookstore or a vendor area for homeschooling stuff, it's like all of a sudden I lose my senses and I'm just like, well, of course they need this and oh, this is cool and yes, yes, yes. And so I just thought it would be great to have a plan in place and just know um, my budget beforehand. And I have budgeted um, about $275 because that is part of my school book budget as well. And I might, yeah, there might be a little bit of leeway in there just because I am buying um, math curriculums and those will probably be, well, one of them for sure will probably be around $100. So 
The rest of it I'm hoping to get for more and I have looked already on um, <clears throat> Rainbow Resources website and I know that daily paragraph editing book is around like $17. So I kind of have a general idea of what most of this is going to cost me. Um, so anyways, that is kind of how I am laying it out for this year and I hope this has been helpful to you and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you in the next video.